A few weeks ago I built a test rig to see if the ped rail wheel is practical. A ped rail has feet all around its circumference which slide in and out and follow a central guide. This allows it to climb up on things and walk over objects. I originally found the design on Wikipedia but I couldn't find any practical working examples on video. At the time I concluded that it wasn't that practical mainly because it's a bit of a hazard when it gets caught up in things, but there are several comments about improvements and further testing that viewers wanted to see. So in this video I'm going to make a four wheel drive version of the machine with various improvements. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. Essentially I need to make another pair of wheels, so this is very similar to the last video where I've got all the feet that slide in and out and I've got little caps which are screwed on top and that'll stop them just falling off entirely. So those are just screwed on with a couple of screws straight into the plastic. Thanks to Simply Bearings who are going to be sponsoring some of the bearings in my projects including this one so check out simplybearings.co.uk. Each leg has an 8mm internal diameter bearing that are very similar to skate size bearings and of course I've got these from Simply Bearings. So these fit all the way around the inside and these are going to run on the guide which is going to bring those legs in and out to the right distance as the wheel rotates. As before the next part has another bearing mounted in it which goes over the main axle so the whole thing fits onto that and it's screwed down with four screws. I've got 14 feet to match my 14 legs on each of the wheels and each of those is screwed on with just a screw to make a pivot so those are just passive hinges. On the back of that is another piece with another bearing so we've got two bearings to mount the whole thing on the axle. So that again just fits on the back and it's screwed down with four screws. The axle fits through the middle and that rotates on both bearings, it's a bit of a wiggle to get it in and that allows the whole wheel to rotate freely. So now I've made two wheels, we've got four in total. One of the improvements from last time was to put a slightly concave feature on the bottom of the guide and that should allow all the feet to run properly on the ground. However, in fact the legs won't actually move that far and it would have to be a much bigger recess to actually get all of those bearings aligned in a straight line. One of the problems was the feet hitting the side of the guide and moving it in the wrong direction. It should slope uphill and the feet should push it, but what actually happens is sometimes it gets caught the wrong way and that causes some problems. The original design though had a kind of sprung mechanism but I'm not sure if that's going to be any better. So for now I'm just going to leave it and we'll do some more testing and maybe redesign the guide later. It does kind of run okay though and it will climb over shallow objects with no problem. So if I put my hand under it you can see the guide does slope uphill and back down on the other side and all of those bearings and the legs and feet mould to the shape to actually make it step up and climb over the objects. You may have noticed my new design had suspension arms, so the central block of the machine is two bits of 2020 extrusion attached with T-nuts into the slot onto some 3D prints that make up the main body and hold the other end of the arms. So I've got multiple suspension arms and also the thing to go on the other end which is going to hold the wheel and the four wheel drive mechanism. So with that all bolted together I've got quite a substantial body for this thing and it's going to be quite large. And of course each of those four suspension assemblies can move independently. Well here it is with all the wheels attached and I've used some bungee cord to make the suspension so we can see that it bends all around and that should be quite good to make sure all of the wheels are touching something to get traction and also conforming with the ground as well as the pedrail wheels conforming with the objects to climb up. 
So that's just some bungee cord that I've tensioned on each one just to act as suspension springs, so it's all nicely balanced in the middle. Last time a few people complained I didn't have rubber feet installed so I bought these 3M stick-on rubber feet which are really rubbery and I've stuck those to all 56 of the feet on all four wheels. I'm using right angle worm gear driven motors and there's four of those, one for each wheel and those are connected with a belt drive to a T5 pulley installed on the back of each wheel. As before, I'm using an Arduino Uno to drive PWM signals into two BTS7960 motor drivers. And I'm using the OpenDog remote again, which uses NRF24L01s as a radio device. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is 3D.ru. Do you have a 3D printing related idea, but maybe not enough expertise, experience or money to put it into action? Sign up for the 3D.ru event where you can win up to a million dollars for your project and launch it on the global market. The event is hosted by 3D.ru, the largest additive manufacturing company in the CIS region that materialises ideas and does everything related to 3D technologies. It doesn't have to be a printer, it could be print materials, software, consumables or any idea that could help advance the industry and deserves attention. Submit a pitch for your project. Experienced professionals who work in additive manufacturing on a daily basis will review your pitch and offer you advice or even a partnership and funding to turn your idea into a reality. So check out event.3d.ru and submit your idea and I'll put that link in the video description as well. Right, let's get back to this ped rail. All four wheels are independently driven, so that means the suspension works still, but also I don't have any steering, so I can kind of turn with skid steering, but it doesn't work all that well due to the rubber feet. I think if they were smooth they'd probably skid much better, but obviously all I can really do is turn them faster on one side of the machine and slower on the other or in opposite directions. You can see sometimes the rubber feet cause the little ankles to pivot over, then it completely loses traction on that wheel and slides along. But it'll do for testing, I can align which direction it goes in and drive forward and backwards fine. All of the wheels seem to run okay, you can see the bearings going around the guide there on both wheels and all of the feet are flat on the ground gripping with the rubber feet, so that seems to have worked out okay. But now we need to sort out the guide and see what actually happens when we try and climb over things. So first of all we'll try a very small object and that seems to work perfectly fine with our guide running in the correct direction kind of leaning up and leaning down on the up and down of the hill. Let's try something slightly bigger and that's still okay for now. But if we make it a little bit bigger, we can see the guide goes the wrong way and suddenly snaps back. So there's some problems there that we need to work on. Let's have a look at that in slow-mo. So I've redesigned the guide with the pivot point much lower that means it should now point in the right direction. So let's try that again with the same height object and we can see that it slopes up the hill and down the hill as we go. Now this would probably still work without the guide in and you can see it's not touching the bearings all the time but now it's actually working and the feet are climbing up over the object. And of course I've done this to all four wheels. I'm pretty happy with my suspension too, we should be able to see that all of the wheels stay in contact with the surface no matter what happens, and you can see that suspension working on whichever wheel it is that needs to lift up. The opposite wheel on the diagonal side is also moving as well with that suspension, so it really crawls over things and keeps traction with all the surfaces, as well as those ped rail wheels conforming with the object to step up over any steps. So I'm pretty happy with how that's worked out.
seem to work out okay. The suspension works really well anyway, and it looks like those ped rail wheels are actually working, the guide is tilting in the right direction. So I guess it's a bit like having a big squashy tire that will conform with surfaces, but actually the advantage we've got here is we've got these physical kind of increments that are hard, so it actually steps up and climbs over things, and that actually seems to be working quite well. Now we've got four wheel drive, and we've got this chassis. So there we go. I'm not sure if we're going to see tractors with this on, but apparently some people commented in the video that there was some stuff used in wartime and things like that. So if you've got any links or pictures or video of an actual vehicle with this type of wheel, then post it in the description below. But that's all for this video. I am going to publish the CAD for this if you'd like to build one or something similar. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, those links are in the description below as well. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early, as well as sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up. All right, that's all for now.